Welcome back to Cards and Comics, and today I'm going to show off my first order I've ever done through the Whatnot app, and it's comic books because I felt like I was getting good deals. I just went there very curious, and the first thing I'm going to show off is, since I bought so many books um, on this um, person's store during their, their live, that they went ahead and gave me freebies as part of being in you know, the room and spending so much money. And so the first two books are the freebie books that they I won as part of their rewards program. So the first book up is Deadpool number one. This is the ongoing series and it's a 9.4. This is a good mid-level book that people um, look for. And in the 9.4, it would sell pretty in that 40 to $60 range, I think. Um, I got to look it up, but it's not a super expensive book. And uh, the other book they sent in as another bonus is number two. So there is both books. This is a 9.0. Again, these are, I, I don't want to call them cheap slabs, but these are like, you know, well below $100. I think even below $50 probably for this book. Um, so I think it would give someone at a card, you know, at a Comic-Con, a chance to get some cool Deadpool books, you know, at a really cheap price. And again, not not expensive books, but, you know, they were freebies, so I'm not going to really complain. Uh, next is a book I actually bought there. Um, it is a nice book. It is um, what they call an animation variation, and this is a Miles Morales. This is Edge of Spider-Verse. Uh, sorry, Spider-Man Enter the Spider-Verse, number one. Um, and a 9.6, so it's definitely a nice looking, um, you know, to me, a nice looking variant. Like I said before, I do very well with variant comic books at these shows, so I definitely wanted to load up a little bit more on some of these graded variants because the raw ones are doing well, but I have a lot of people interested in the graded ones as well. This is not a super duper expensive one, but this one is in that, um, I say the price point. Um, you know, um, and a 98, definitely a couple hundred bucks. Um, so this is one at 96, a little more affordable, but people like the cover and it's mild. So, and he is still someone I sell a ton of. So I was able to get that, uh, basically at half price of what it normally sells for. So I was very happy with that. Next up is a book that I feel like was again, um, pretty cheap. And then this is a book that, um, I think, you know, isn't got, you know, tons of first appearances, but it's autographed by a lot of cool people and a lot of people really like the autographed books. Again, it's Batman 619. So it's got a great uh, Jim Lee cover and it's signed by Jim Lee, Alex Sinclair and Scott Williams. So it's a triple autograph. You can see all three of them there and it's a nine six. And so, um, you know, it's just hard to get these things signed and it's expensive. So a lot of people who love like say Jim Lee or Frank Miller or Todd McFarlane, they look to, to put together runs of these books. And, um, I think the cover is nice. So it's a, it's a cool looking cover. Um, it's not a super expensive book, but it's got the three autographs. I think you'll find at a card show or sorry, comic con. I keep saying card show, but comic con, um, a lot of people that like these books and, I sell, even though I personally don't collect them in my personal collection, I do sell quite a few of graded uh, com or comics uh, that are been autographed. So even though they're not my personal favorite, it's something that I do sell quite a bit. All right, next up, it's kind of like, I think the, the you know, the next kind of the biggest book I bought. And again, this came in at about right at 70 to 80% of recent cop. It's NYX, and so this is their uh, price point on it that they were looking, hoping to get out of it. Um, it did not bring near that. It brought about 50% of that. And um, so for me, you know, getting this book basically, you know, uh, at like over $100 off the last eBay sale, uh, to me, makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, this book is, you know, the first appearance of X-23. I've actually never owned this book. This is one of those books that, um, you know, for whatever reason, um, I just have never been successful in getting a copy of because 
it's gone through so much speculation up and up and down. Every time I look at getting one of these, it's like there's another X-23 speculation and somewhere in the Marvel Universe. And so it spikes again. Uh, right now, it's not really spiking. So it was a good time to pick one up. But it's a major character. Um, it's a key book. It's a definitely, I, I kind of like the cover. And, um, but it's just one of those books I've never owned. And I'm glad I got off the list. And again, when I go to comic, uh, comic cons, a lot of people want this book. So it's not going to be a book that, um, you know, if I wanted to move uh, because I'm in it at such a good price, I could definitely move it pretty easily in my opinion. So there you go. That was a nice book at a good price. Next book, um, up Oops, let's see here yeah i'll do this one up so next book up is definitely um I'll take out the holder was the one i was most excited about just from a personal collection standpoint uh, because again i think it's just a really nice book cover wise and it is dr strange 169 and so this is the first solo title uh for doctor strange uh you know um so like you know just like a lot of characters they start out in an anthology book um like strange tales or things like that and then they move into their own book and like doom patrol do the same thing so that's why he his solo series starts at 169 um versus you know um you know uh one so it confuses a lot of people that this is the first solo book but it is um, but it's also just a great cover, great artwork. Um, Dan Atkins, the cover, and he, it's a lot of Serenko type art. I mean, when I first saw this cover, when I was, you know, um, you know, just looking at comic books, I'm like, that looks like Serenko, and it's not. It is Atkins. So it's funny that Marvel definitely had a style back in the day um, that a lot of artists were using. But, you know, this is a great <laughs> good book, and I got it. I mean, literally 50% of last sale. So I just feel like it was such a good deal. I had to pull the trigger on it. Um, even though it's, it's off white to white, you know, it's not perfect. You know, if it was white, it would be even better. Um, there we go. Blue chip comics. It's who ran it. Um, so yeah, there you go. I mean, you can't really argue getting a book like this at half price. Um, I mean, it's just a beautiful book. I, I mean, even I, Again, it's one of those things where I would just want that in my collection, even if I didn't sell it. Now, here's another book that was given to me for free. So you see, I got a lot of freebies in this whole show. And I won a contest and I got some extra books for for being, um, you know, in this whole, um, you know, just being part of their show. So this is uh, John Burns' Next Men. Um, there's nothing really special about this from content. It's just kind of a cool... Story, it's number one, which is kind of cool for 92. It's a silver foil embossed cover. It's a 92, so it's not, you know, like if it was 98, you can make an argument that you'll have a collector um, really wanting this in high grade. This is not, um, I call like high grade uh, 90s. Uh, you know, you want it a 98 in general. So it's going to be a value book, but it is a, you know, again, it's John Byrne, um, and it's a cool book. I believe the first appearance of, Hellboy was in the next man, you know, book, but it's not this one. Uh, so again, trading card certificate insert, uh, silver foil logo. And it's just, you know, uh, it's a cool nineties book, but it definitely was a throw in a freebie, which is fine. You know, like, you know, you can't complain when your freebies are, you know, books like that because, you know, you didn't buy them. You know, <laughs> I, th I think people get a little hung up on what you get for free now. The next thing up is going to be, um, pretty sure everything else is going to be raw. So that's the graded books. And so then I'll get into the raw books, which are in this box here. So I will open these. So, um, it was a combination of raw and graded. So, you know, it's stuff, uh, it's, you know, again, for me, I do both as well. I don't grade a lot of CGC books myself. I have one guy I send him in with and I do not grade myself because um, you know, I just haven't, you know, had good experience um, 
with that and I think cleaning and pressing is important especially because a lot of my books I would actually send in are older and you kind of have to do that to get any kind of grade on those books um, so I don't do that so someone else has to do that for me anyway so might as well just do the whole process and I don't have to kind of worry about it um, other people clean and press their own books and that's great uh, more power to you I just don't have the knowledge or the time to learn but it'd be great one of these days if i did do that i guess all right first up is here we go daredevil number 17. Uh, the reason i got this again is the spider-man on the cover and just um early daredevil um you know that's the thing is like when i'm um at these shows um people just come up looking to fill the runs and you know early any early daredevil fantastic four spider-man books generally if you price them right are easy sells and this one definitely was pretty cheap in the live stream so i went ahead and grabbed it um next up is uncanny x-men 167 um pretty classic cover um again early x-men it just you know again one of those things where you have to um you know, just have inventory, you know, and it's definitely a very nice copy. Um, I will say that this is definitely a high grade copy. The Daredevil 17 was mid grade, you know, uh, I'd say, you know, like, you know, fine, you know, not well, probably very fine, um, you know, type grade. This is definitely close to near mint. So again, this is something that you could grade it. And if you grade it and it comes out really high, then it's worth a lot more money. But again, even as a back issue, it's worth just having. Um, this is interesting. So this is the certificate. So this is uh, Glory and Angeline, uh, Angeline uh, Image Comics. This is a Chromium cover. I just got it because um, I like the cover. Um, it's Chromium. It's very cool. It came with this fun little certificate um, of authenticity, I guess. Um, that's like a mini version of the cover because I think it's a wraparound cover. I don't know if the back, if I can see it. Yeah, there we go. There's the full wraparound cover. It's just cool looking. It was like $9. So <laughs> when I, when I go to card show or sorry, comic cons, these are the kind of books that sometimes just put out, um, because people just, they're kind of nostalgic for this type of book and it's just kind of fun and you know, not again, not a bank busting type book. Um, next up again, Daredevil 200. Very cool, um, kind of uh, bullseye, um, daredevil fight book. David Byrne, or sorry, John Byrne, David Byrne. That's even funnier. John Bernard. Um, very nice copy. This is definitely high grade. Again, I do think that they were very accurate on their grading because they would say these are, you know, this is a high grade book. Uh, it's, it's pressable or it's, you know, it's, it's gradable. And this is definitely a very, very nice copy. You can tell it's very flat. Um, it's not been, you know, uh, I would call like, um, it's got one little thing here. I think you could probably press out. So again, I think this is a high grade book. This is like a nine, six, nine, eight type book. Daredevil 200. Uh, next up is Falcon one again, $9 book and just, you know, um, a book I don't see very often. So I just grabbed it very high grade. And to me, it's it's a good spec play. And it's also just a fun book to have. It's a good cover. And, you know, again, not very expensive. Um, this is one I really like. I've seen this book many times, um, you know, but I've never, ever found one in the wild. Um, so just, you know, it's not a super expensive book. And again, it was like a, um, it's a Terry Dotson cover, beautiful foil cover. It just screams 90s to me. And uh, I think Storm, you know, could be a major character at some point. Um, just because I think, you know, she's not, once X-Men comes over, after Wolverine, she's, to me, the, one of the most, um, um, you know, interesting characters in the X-Men. If they did backstory and just did, did more of her, you know, background. So um, I feel like, um, you know, this is one of those fun books that people just like when you put them out on display. And um, again, a lot of fun. And then, Last but not least, uh, Miles and um, Peter. So this is, I think, the first meeting of Peter and 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 Miles. So like, this is like 
the first time you have like the crossover between the two different universes and they get to meet. And so this is kind of one of those, uh, you know, both Peter and Miles meet in real, like for real. So this is like um, that first crossover. And so it's one of those books that not a lot of people know about. But again, I have tons of Miles collectors looking for books like this. So this is why I grabbed it. So, um, you know, the raw books, there's nothing, there's no major keys in the raws. I think, you know, obviously some, you know, one kind of Silver Age book here with Daredevil 17. But in general, um, just kind of fun books that are, uh, good for inventory purposes, um, you know, some 90s stuff, you know, high grade, uh, you know, back issue books, um, you know, again, you know, 90s chromium covers, um, you know, again, an inventory book that's super high grade. Again, this is gradable. And this is, you know, again, probably the only key, major key that's in here, I think it could be a major key. It's the first meeting between Miles and Peter Parker. So there you go, guys. That's what I got, I felt like I did pretty good, especially on some of the prices on the NYX and the Doctor Strange. I think those two books were really, really reasonable. And I'm excited that I was able to get this, um, you know, um, these books for those prices. And uh, yeah, and get ready for the next Comic-Con. And there it is. And so my first experience on Walnut was pretty good. The freebies were nice, and again, they they you know delivered on what they said they would do, and fast shipping, and I can't really complain. So, those guys, I'm going to go back to their you know channel once they go live again, and yeah, I'd recommend it. And so I think it's it's definitely why not is you got to know your stuff, you got to go fast, and you got to be with people who are reputable. Um, and these guys definitely were reputable, so I think it was a good experience. But I can see how it could go sour if you're in a room where they keep you know, overpricing things or they're not very fun to be with, or they don't do what they say they're going to do or, or kind of are shady. I can see where it could go both ways. So I think, um, overall I had no issues, good experience. And I, I definitely will go with these guys again. So see you next time on cards and comics. Bye.